The Caron Suspension Bridge was completed in August 1972 and was built by the Porton Construction Company. This bridge was built in a remote part of Scotland and often in very difficult weather conditions. Charles Porton is the managing director of that company and he's now defending an action for negligence brought by a former employee of his, Jack Stevens, who's holding out for £35,000 in damages. The plaintiff, Jack Stevens, is not in court. He was not only paralysed by the accident, but also suffered complete loss of speech. Therefore, this action has been brought by his wife, Carol, on his behalf. And legally, she is termed next friend. She is also, of course, principal witness on the issue of damages. Mrs. Stevens, just how long had you and your husband been married when this tragedy occurred? Uh, Eighteen months, that's all. Eighteen months. And over this pitifully short time that you had together, how would you describe your marriage? Oh, it was perfect. Perfect? In what way perfect? Jack was so kind, considerate and understanding. We never had no rows. When he came come home, he always brought me a present. You know, little things. Of course, we went out a lot then, dancing and parties. Hardly ever stayed home with a smashing time. And he was so generous. Never went short of nothing. Not like now. I mean, I only had to say I liked something. He'd buy it for me. Generous indeed. How much did your husband earn, Mrs. Stevens? Uh, about £70 a week. Sometimes it was a bit more, but never less than 70 now, This, of course, included overtime. Oh, yes. And so, over the 18-month period prior to the accident, your husband's weekly income averaged £70. Oh, not just for 18 months. He'd been earning that sort of money for years, long before I met him. Oh, well, that, of course, is here, sir. I take it you have no objection, Mr Lloyd. Uh, no, my lord. Mm -hmm. So long as it is understood that I'm not admitting it. Now, you said you went out a lot. How often in, say, a month? Oh, eight or nine times at least. So it would be safe to say that you had an understanding and generous husband who earned a good income and that you had a full social life. Very full. But this, of course, is now all changed. Oh, yeah. I never go out now. I haven't done since the accident. Tell me, Mrs. Stevens, had this accident not occurred, was it your husband's intention to remain working as a steel erector for the rest of his working life? No, he was going to give it another four years, and by then we reckoned we would have saved enough money to buy a business for ourselves. I would have run it, and Jack would have got a job local, and he wouldn't have had to have been away all the time. Now, was this just some vague idea, or had you taken any active steps towards this end? You mean, have we done anything about it? Oh, yeah, we started saving. We got up to £1,500 before it all happened, and we got the estate agents to send us details of shops, you know, to give us an idea of the price and that sort of thing. Mm, so it wasn't just an idle pipe dream? Oh, no, definitely not. That's what we was going to do. Now, had you any other plans for the future? Yeah. And these were? We were going to be on our own for two years, and then we were going to start a family. I see. But that, of course, is now impossible. Oh, yeah, quite impossible. In fact, all your hopes and plans for the future have been most cruelly shattered. Now, I think it might be helpful if you could tell the court of the change that has taken place in the lives of you and your husband, Mrs. Stevens. Yeah, well, we've lost all our savings. We haven't got a penny now. I stay at home all the time. I mean, even if we could afford to, we couldn't go out because Jack has to either be in his chair or in his bed. He has to have everything done for him. He's quite helpless. I mean, it's like having a baby around all the time. And he's always going to be like that. Or well, the hospital gave him an electric bell for emergencies and that sort of thing, but he doesn't use it. So your husband needs someone in constant attendance the whole time? Well, he should have, yeah, but we can't afford it. I have to do everything myself. My mum comes in and looks after him on occasions, and uh, the nurse comes in a few times a week for ten minutes or so. But other than that, I'm stuck there, and there's no point in talking to him because he can't answer. And even if he tries, it only upsets him. So we just sit in silence and watch the telly all the time. I understand your husband has been attending hospital. Oh, yeah, twice a week for six months, but hasn't made a scrap of difference. I see. And financially, how do you manage? Sort of hand to mouth, really. There's the national health and supplementary, but by the time I've paid the rent and the food and the bills, there's nothing left. So you're saying that you're now entirely dependent on the state? Yeah. Whereas prior to this accident, you had money in the bank, a hopeful future, and a healthy husband earning £70 a week. That's right. 
Not much hope for the future now. Mr. Lloyd? <clears throat> Mr. Stevens, I've been doing one or two sums, and I, I think I might have made a mistake somewhere. Perhaps you can help me. You say that you and your husband saved £1,500 in a year. Yeah. And that but for the accident, he'd have gone on working for another four years. That's right. And that's why my solicitor says it's one of the reasons why we should be compensated. Ah, yes, I see. Uh, so that, among other things, you claim that you would have saved £6,000 during those four years. Well, we would have, wouldn't we? Because your husband, quote, hardly ever brought home less than £70 a week. Yeah. But surely that's not quite correct, is it? I don't see what you're getting at. I told you Jack earns £70 a week. Ah, yes. Earning, but not bringing home. Oh, I see what you mean. And to earn that £70 a week, he had to live away from home and keep you in London, didn't he? Yeah. Well, how much did that cost? We had £20 a week each. I see, and of course he'd have the usual stoppages of tax and insurance, would he? I suppose so. Well, then I put it to you, Mrs Stevens, that your husband's take-home pay was around £50 a week and not £70. You say so. Did you and your husband decide to buy a shop the moment you got married? No, not the moment, no. About six months after, I suppose. Uh, so in the year that followed, you saved this £1,500? Yeah. How? Um, I said how? Well, I don't know. We just saved it. Well, impossible. If, if you and your husband spent £40 a week between you, that only leaves £10, and that means in a year you could only save £500. Well, well, perhaps Jack had some saved already. And perhaps you decided to buy a shop when you got married. No, no, we was just looking. And you mean to say you'd have gone on just looking for another four years? Yes. By which time your husband would have been 52. Now, oh, steel erecting's a job for a young man, isn't it? Jack was as strong as an ox and fit. I'm sure he was, for his age. Am I not right in saying that he was already finding the work hard, that he realised he couldn't go on for another four years, and that he was actively looking for a business at the time of the accident? No, he enjoyed his work. He just didn't like being away from home, that's all. How often did he get home? About twice a month. Just for short weekends? Yeah, that's right. He'd come home Saturday morning and go back... Sunday night. Look, if he could have got the same job nearer home, he would have, but anything else wouldn't have paid the money. I see, so he worked away because of the money. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Stevens, there's a great deal of difference in the ages between you and your husband. He is uh, 49 and you are... 28. Now, did this age gap ever create any problems? How do you mean? Well, you said earlier that you were always going out, dances and parties. Uh, he didn't perhaps want to stay at home sometimes. Jack? Oh, no. It's generally him that suggested it. Ah, perhaps wanting to show off his attractive young wife. Well, maybe. But unfortunately, he only had the opportunity to do that uh, twice a month, I think you said. Yeah. But you've already told Miss Tate that you yourself went out eight or nine times a month. So that means on these other occasions, your husband wasn't there. Uh, well, no. Did a Mr Tom Morgan frequently accompany you on these other occasions? Tom's a friend of Jack's. They was working on the same job. Yes, I know. He's also unmarried. Did he not regularly get away from the site and visit you while your husband was away? Well, with respect, my lord, I really cannot see the relevance of all this. Well, I can, Miss Tate. The point is relevant to the issue of damages. Among other things, the plaintiff is claiming for a shortened expectation of life. The question is, did Mr. Stevens have the prospect of a predominantly happy life or not? Mrs. Stevens... Would you say that your husband is a jealous man? No. He didn't object that you, a married woman, should be taken out by another man? Tom and he were close friends. Where? You mean they're not now? Oh, of course they are. It's just that Tom's been working away on another job, but he always calls in to see Jack. Mrs. Stevens, I suppose your husband did know that while he was working hundreds of miles away, you were being taken out by another man. Yes, of course he did. Mrs. Stevens, on the occasions when Mr. Morgan kindly took you out, were you alone or were you with friends? With friends. Always? Yes. Thank you, Mrs. Stevens. Thank you, Mrs. Stevens. You may leave the witness box. I call Thomas Morgan, my lord. 